we are still graphing lines and now we are dealing with finding the slope of the line that crosses through the points of these two, okay? So a little bit different of, a, uh, of how it asks this problem. Uh, and we're gonna be introduced to the, a, a new formula here. That's called the slope formula. Slope formula, that's what we're trying to find, or we, I'll, I'll give you that, but we're trying to find the slope of the line that crosses through these two points. Okay, so what is this actually saying? What is this question actually asking? Well, this is asking us to find the slope of a line and this line that we don't know much about, but we know that it crosses through these two points, okay? So it helps to have the visual of the graph um, to do these, okay? So four comma zero, that's a point on the graph, right? So I can draw that. So four on the X, zero on the Y would be right here. In this point, five comma three. So I go to five on the X, three on the Y, and that's all I know, okay? And it wants me to find the slope of the line that goes through these two points, okay? So it helps to have the visual shown to us, okay? And so what I can do with these drawn is I can connect them and I am able to count, just like I did the before in the last video, I can count what the slope would be between these two points, okay? Um, and so let me just do that real quick, but then I'm gonna also show you another way to do it uh, with the slope formula. And you might be saying, I don't need another way to do it. I'm gonna explain why you need this alternate method here in a second, okay? This point to this point, right? I start with the one that's furthest on the left. Does it go from left to right? So I start with this guy and I count how many spots does it move up and then right to get to the next one. So it moves up one, two, three, and then right one. Up three, right one. So your slope for this is three over one or just three. That is my slope of this line, okay? And notice it is a positive slope, right? Positive three, as it is inclining from left to right. But why do I need this, this formula, okay? Um, unfortunately, a lot of the time when you're asked these problems, you are not given a graph. You are not given a graph to draw on, okay? And you might be saying, well, I can just sketch my own, okay? You can, okay? Sometimes that can be a little tricky. And in, uh, in later examples, I can show you why um, that might be a problem for you to do to sketch your own, okay? So there is an alternate method um, that we're gonna learn here that does not involve drawing uh, the picture on the actual graph, okay? Um, so let me erase this. Well, actually, no, we're, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna do this with the slope formula too. So slope formula, I'm gonna draw it and you're gonna be like, ugh, that's terrible. But I'll explain, it's actually not that bad. So the slope, right? Slope formula is how you can find the slope of something, okay? So that makes sense. But y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Are you going blech, like I thought you would? Well, maybe. y2 minus y1, x2 minus x1. Okay, that's my slope formula. Now, what do these little twos and ones mean, first off, okay? All that is doing, those aren't like exponents, right? Kids think, oh, that's saying y squared, right? That's different. Notice this, this two is up top, so that's an exponent. These twos and ones in this formula is more telling us, it's, it's kind of saying like the second y value minus the first y value. And so in a problem like this, okay, so let me kind of do this separate. So we found this using the graph, okay. I'm going to do this problem again, and I know you already know the answer, but I just want you to see the process um, um, of, of something using the formula, okay. Um, think about this. When you have two points given to you, right? When you have two points given to you, and the first point, the first value is x, the second value is y. And then in the second one as well, the first value is x, the second value is y, okay? Right, so in this type of problem, I have two separate pairs of values. I have two x values and I have two y values, right? And so all this formula is doing is kind of denoting like which y value to subtract from the other y value. And what that means is, right, I would call this the second point, because it's the second one given to me, and I'll call this the first point, and that's because that's the first one given to me, okay? So a way that I could kind of match these to match with what's in the formula, I could call this x2 and y2. All that means is that these are the x and y values given to me in the second point. And then I could say these ones are x1 and y1, because these are the x and y values given to me in the first point. So don't be confused by the notations here. All it's saying is that it's the second y value from that second point 
minus the first y value from that first point. And then the same with the x's. But if I was to, let's just pretend we didn't do this problem, and let's just go about this using the slope formula, okay? Now that I have these labeled the right way, okay? So the slope formula says y2 minus y1 is what's on top, right? Because the slope formula is just one big fraction, okay? So I do the second y value minus the first y value, okay? And it's really helpful to label these so you don't get them mixed up because it's super easy to mix these up. So y value's on top, three is the y2 value, right? It's the second y value given to me. And then I minus that, I minus the first y value from that, okay? And that first y value is zero, okay? That's on top of the fraction, okay? And let me actually just do that, because that's super easy, right? Three minus zero is just three. And then on the bottom of this fraction though, I do the same thing, but the, with the x values, I do the second x value, minus the first x value, okay? So I do the second x value, which is five, minus the first x value, which is four. So the second x value minus the first x value, five minus four is one, right? So three over one, and hey, look, this slope matches the one that I found on my graph. How about that? So the slope formula works. It works, and it's another way to find my slope, okay? We'll do a couple more examples here and uh, get more comfortable, hopefully, with this with this slope formula. Okay, so let me erase. Okay, we got example two up here, and it says, same directions, find the slope of the line that crosses through the points, one comma seven and five comma nine. Okay, and again, it's super helpful when we have the graph given to us, um, but we don't have that here. Um, and so let's, let's do this um, with the slope formula, okay? And again, the first step here is let's label these values, okay? So again, it's for every time you're given an ordered pair, the first number is x, the second number is y. That goes for both points, okay? So x comma y, x comma y. But again, it's helpful to label them as two and one, right? So this, right, this is the first point, and this is the second point, okay? And so the second point, that would be x two and y two. Again, all that means is just the second x value, the second y value, and then this one is x1 and y1. So those are the labels of those. And now I can just substitute all those into my formula, okay? So m equals y2 minus y1. So my second x or second y value, which is nine, minus, it's always gonna be minus, my first y value, which is seven. So on top here, my y value subtracted, nine minus seven. And then on the bottom are the x value subtracted, five minus one. I actually do the subtraction, so nine minus seven is two, and then on the bottom, five minus one is four, okay? So two over four, positive two over four would be my slope, okay? But you might notice two-fourths, two-fourths, that is a fraction that can reduce, right? And it can, two-fourths reduces to one over two. How do you know that? Again, I said a giveaway that a fraction can reduce is if the top and bottom are both even numbers, okay? Other fractions can reduce too, but if they're both even on top and bottom, that's a dead giveaway. That that top and the bottom can be divided by something in the same number, and then you can make it into a smaller fraction. All right, so that is that. Um, I'm gonna do one or two more examples with you. Um, it does get a little trickier when we deal with negatives, so let's let's get some negatives involved here. All right, so I got number three here. You might notice these numbers are a little bigger. And this is why, this is why with these problems where having the graph given to us isn't always necessarily, or, or drawing your own graph isn't necessarily helpful because these are bigger numbers, right? The standard graph is kind of goes from positive 10 to negative 10. These points wouldn't fit on there, okay? So you'd have to draw a big old graph uh, to fit these on. So this is why it's helpful to have the slope formula. And yes, just, just on that too, you do have some problems that are like a thousand comma seven thousand, and then other points like two thousand comma eight thousand. You do have these sometimes, okay? And imagine drawing a graph that's that big to fit that many uh, spaces on it, okay? You could or you could do it, but but for most kids, it's helpful to just learn how to use the slope formula rather than drawing a graph that can fit these. Anyway. Learning the slope formula is valuable, I promise, even if you don't believe me yet. 
Okay, so again, bigger numbers, but let's go into my slope formula here. Okay, got x and y, x and y. And hopefully at this point you understand too that these two are my second point, so these get x2 and y2. And these two are my first point, so these get x1 and y1. And then, hey, common mistake, I like covering these. A common mistake here is saying, okay, 30 minus 14 on top and then 15 minus 4 on bottom. That's wrong for a couple of reasons, but doing the same point, like kind of the values within the same point, subtracting those, that is not good. That would be y2 minus x2 on top and then y1 minus x1 on bottom. So that is not right. Okay, so common mistake. Don't do that. Okay. You're taking values from different points. Okay, so 30 minus 15, y2 minus y1, that's going to be on top. And then on bottom, x2 minus x1. Now, this is going to be trickier than you think. I'm going to go slowly here. x2 is negative 14. The operation I'm doing is subtraction between these two values. Okay, so I am subtracting the x1 value. And the x1 value is negative 4. Okay, so this negative, or this, this is a subtraction sign, but I'm subtracting a negative number. Okay, so I would say minus negative 4. Okay. I hope you get why that happens because again, this is the operation is subtraction, but I'm subtracting a negative number. But the, okay, so let's do the subtraction. Okay, 30 minus 15. 30 minus 15 would be just 15. And then on the bottom, negative 14 minus negative 4. Do you remember what we can do with minus uh, minusing a negative? If you don't, minusing a negative is the same as plus, right? We can change these minus negative to a plus. Okay, you might have learned in middle school, like keep change, change. Yeah, so this is the same as saying negative 14 plus 4 on the bottom. So negative 14 plus 4 would be a negative 10. Okay, so this is another fraction where you might be saying, does it reduce? They're bigger numbers. A lot of the time, the bigger numbers in a fraction, it does reduce. Um, but my, so my both numbers on top and bottom are even. That rule doesn't apply here because 15 is not even. Okay, but it can reduce because five is a common factor amongst these two numbers. And so 15 divided by five would be three, negative 10 divided by five would be negative two. So three over negative two, or that's the same as negative three halves, that would be my slope. So we do deal with some fraction stuff in, in, when we do a slope formula, okay? Um, it can be a little tricky, but um, we gotta deal with it. Again, fractions, you might not have seen that stuff since middle school, so you might have to remind yourself with a video or two on how we reduce fractions and all that. Uh, but I know YouTube can hook you up there. There's tons of good videos about that. Okay, let me do one more. All right, I got number four here. Number four says, same directions. I don't have to read them again. But I did want to throw one of these in here with the massive numbers in my points, okay? Because we do deal with that sometimes, okay? But with bigger numbers, what's nice about the slope formula is with bigger numbers on a graph, oftentimes that means the graph is a little bit more complicated. It's a little bit bigger, a little bit zoomed out. But with a slope formula, it's not that much trickier because it's the same formula. You put the same numbers in there in the same places. Um, so it's not that much different, okay? First thing we want to do, let's label those. So again, X and Y, but again, hopefully you recognize at this point that's X1 and Y1, and then this would be X2 and Y2. Now let's put these values into um, the slope formula. So again, y2, 300, minus y1. And notice, y1 is a negative number. So it's going to be 300 minus the y1 value. So minus negative 500. Okay, so we're subtracting a negative number. So we have two minuses in there. And then x2, 100, minus x1, and again, that's also a negative number, so minus negative 700. And so again, well, just like I said in the last example, minus negatives change to pluses. So you can just even just make that into a one big plus like that. So it's the same as adding. So 300 plus 500 would be 800, and then 100 plus 700 would be 800. How about that? Um, so 800 over 800, Hopefully you recognize that that definitely can reduce something divided by itself is one. So this would reduce all the way down to one over one or just one. But that is the slope formula, not as scary as it looks. 
and uh, thanks for watching.